Hello and welcome to your video tutorial for your lab report six. Please note that this tutorial just shows you how to complete the statistical analyses and does not give you the direct answers for your homework. All right, so let's get started. First, how to calculate averages and standard deviations. Remember, these are called descriptive statistics. So if I want to calculate the average age of our female participants, I would click in the cell, type equals, begin typing average, then click, then I click and drag, close parenthesis, and hit enter. If I want to copy that formula all the way across, I can hold my mouse so that this is a black plus sign and drag over and magic. Now I have the averages for all of these columns. All right, so that was how to calculate averages and standard deviations. Oh, just kidding, standard deviations. So standard deviation, we hit equals, start to type standard, and then we will click stdev.s. That stands for sample, since we're working with sample data. So click, and then just like we did with average, we're going to highlight the whole area that we want to get the standard deviation of, close parenthesis, and enter. If we want to make this pretty and just have uh, one decimal, we can hit this shortcut right here until it gives us one decimal. If we want to drag and copy the formula of standard deviation all the way across, we can do that. And then just a reminder that these are our standard deviations. Alrighty, that was descriptive statistics. Next, let's practice how to create a scatter plot and calculate R. So R is our correlation. For this example, let's go to uh, our, on our both sexes tab. Here are the steps we're going to follow. So create a scatter plot of the values in column C and column D. So we're trying to understand the relationship between resting heart rate and hours spent watching TV in all of our KIN 201 Fall 2019 students. So I'm going to click inside this box. Um, just kidding, not yet. I'm going to highlight those two columns. And then go to Insert. Click the little scatter plot looking icon. We'll click the first one. And there's our scatter plot. All right, now to make it look prettier, we're going to go up here to add chart element. Let's add axis titles. So we want a primary horizontal. We'll add again, primary vertical. So we wanna give the chart a title and axis titles. So overall, since we're doing correlation, we know that we're looking for relationship. So we can make a title something like relationship between resting heart rate and hours spent watching TV. in college students. And then we look at these values and these values. Since none of our hours spent watching TV go above 40, we know that these are the values that represent hours spent watching TV. So hours spent watching TV and then therefore this is our resting heart rate. 
All right, and then I'm going to just click this again. So um, I'm going to go to Format. Just kidding. Chart Design. Add Chart Element. I want to remove my grid lines just to make it prettier. And lastly, I want to add a trend line. It'll hit the linear trend line. Now to go to our next step. So we did step one and step two. The last step is now to click inside this yellow box. We're going to calculate R to determine the direction and strength of the relationship. So we'll hit equals to start our formula. Start, type, start typing correlation. Click. And array one, resting heart rate, drag and drop. Then we hit a comma. Now we can see array two is highlighted. So now we want to do our second variable, drag and drop. We close the parenthesis and hit enter. If we want to make this pretty again, we can reduce down to two decimals. So now we can look at our R value. We can see that the R value based on our number and our visual is a positive direction. So as one value goes up, the other value goes up. And based on the number being 0.06, we know that this is considered no relationship based on our PowerPoint from uh, lab week seven. All right, so that was correlation, scatter plot, and calculating R. All right, lastly, how to calculate P. So for this example, we're going to look at males versus females, minutes of strenuous exercise. So when we're calculating P, um, P stands for statistical significance. And in our case, we're talking about t-tests. So for example, if we want to know if females and males have significant differences in their weekly strenuous exercise behaviors, we will administer a t-test between those two samples which means we are comparing the means between our two samples, males and females. So let me show you how I did this. We'll hit equals, start typing t-test, click t-test, and now this is all the info that we're going to need to put in. First we'll start with our array one, so this is one of our samples, so we'll do the minutes of strenuous exercise per week comma, array two, now we'll go to males, comma, and next it asks us about tails. So one equals a one tail distribution, two equals a two tail distribution. If we look at our textbook, um, we can see that two tailed is a test that assumes that the difference between the two means could favor either group. And a one-tailed t-test is a test that assumes that the difference between the two means lie in one direction only. You can also see here that generally in behavioral research, we are not so sure of our results that we can employ a one-tailed t-test. So um, our t-test is in fact a two-tailed t-test. Let's go back to Excel. We will click two or simply type two, then comma and type. So since we are looking at two different samples, we know they're either going to use number two or three. The reason we know we're using this number three is because these two samples have an unequal variance. So you will use three for your homework. So for tails for your homework, you will use two. For type for your homework, you will use three close parenthesis and enter. So now we can see that our p value is 
0 0.46. And like we learned in lab, we know that if our p is greater than 0 0.05, it is not significant. Some publications have even stricter guidelines that our p-value needs to be less than 0 0.001. Um, so if we, overall, if our p-value is above 0 0.05, we know that our two samples, our two sets of data, do not have significant differences. So therefore, there is not a significant difference between females' minutes of strenuous exercise per week and males' strenuous exercise per week. Alrighty, I hope this helps for your homework. Um, and please email your TA if you have any questions.